All right, then, if you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask you to turn to Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. And we're going to begin reading in verse 13. Acts chapter 26 in verse 13. The Bible says, At midday, O king, I saw in the way a bright light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the, and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul. Why persecutest thou me? It is, it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise, stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness of both the things which thou hast seen and of the things which... Uh, in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, and unto whom I will send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and the, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and, inherit, and inheritance among them, which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness and watch care. Lord, we praise you again for your word, for what it means to us, uh, for the goodness that you showed us down through the years. We pray now that you would honor your word with your presence. And we'd be faithful to give you the praise for it, for it's in Christ's name that we do pray. Amen. Now, I also want to uh, include just uh, very quickly, a little uh, further down uh, from that, the Bible says uh, he was not disobedient to uh, the heavenly vision. And then a little bit later in verse 25, Festus answers and says, but I said... Uh, excuse me, verse 24, and he thus spake uh, for himself, and Festus says, Thou art that with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself with much, much learning, doth make thee mad or crazy. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'll be preaching tonight about is the difference be between crazy and dedicated. Now, most people tonight would look about the county and look out and uh, see just a handful of people meeting here and on their week of the celebration of the Christ Mass and say that we're crazy. They'll say, why are they even trying? Why are they not enjoying the Christmas season? And on and on we go, they would go. But I want to point out to you that there's a difference between crazy and dedicated. Now, Paul was in no, no, uh, no form of craziness. He wasn't in any form crazy at all. But he'd spent time with the Lord, and he had committed himself to the Lord. Now, the reason that seemed crazy to many is committing the entirety of your life, even to your death, to something you've never seen, to something that you really know nothing about, to something in man's eyes that's not even tangible and that you can't even feel and willing to give your life for it. That's crazy to people today. And even as he stood before Agrippa and had the opportunity to plead, plead his own case, that was not his choice, but rather he spoke the name of Jesus. Uh, back in our text, verse 13, he, he brings him up to the point that he, uh, when he met the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 13, he, he says that he sees a light that was brighter than the sun itself. And from this day forward, Paul had a vision 
uh, issue where he could not see well. Now, that is the first thing in being really dedicated unto the Lord is what are you looking at? Now, the difference between Paul and everybody else, he had his mind's eye on Christ when everybody else had their mind's eye on this world. They were disturbed about the world. They were upset about what was going on. Uh, uh, Rome had the full occupation of Jerusalem, and they wanted back, and everybody was looking at what was going on, and uh, Paul was looking at the mind of Christ. Now, only you can answer that this evening is where uh, your focus is. What do you look the most to? Uh, what... Uh, it has the person of the Lord Jesus Christ blinded you to other things. That's very important that you ask yourself. Then in verse 14, he speaks of, uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ directly speaking to him. Now, the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ, and in Acts chapter 9, of the, that account of the very same thing, he actually beholds the Son of God, and, and, and those things happen for apostles only. But, if the Lord's never spoken to you, I would make my calling and election sure. And if all he's ever spoke to you, and it's a wonderful thing, is that he spoke life to you, I still make my calling and election sure. Because he still talks to me today just as he did the day that the Lord saved me and made me new. Does he speak to you? That, that, that's a critical question today. And, and most people want to avoid it. But the, the fascinating thing in here is that he spoke, called him by his name. Mm -hmm. And I and think in... Uh, the account in Acts chapter 9, he says, you'll no longer be called Saul, but thou art Paul. Changed who he was, changed, changed his identity. So another thing that we can learn from this, this text is if your experience with Christ did not change who you were, you probably don't know him like maybe you think you do. It's a, it's a life-changing experience. The end of verse 14 uh, that said that it was hard to kick against the pricks, and that was the golden instrument, that was the driving instrument to make an ox go in the direction that you wanted to, and, uh, and it's still true today. Uh, but it is the mind of mankind to do something else. So every once in a while, he has to gold you a little bit. Every once in a while, he has to job you a little bit to get you back on track. Uh, again, an identity for the redeemed that the lost know nothing about. That the lost don't have any idea of even what we're speaking of when you try to tell them of a good working over by the Lord. Verse 15, and I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Now, I want you to see that's a very interesting statement because they had never met face to face. But who was he really persecuting? The people of God, right? The church. Uh, he, he was on his way to the church in Antioch when this very event happened to take care of the believers there. So what we would really want to consider when we're down and out and when we're upset with a fellow's church is you better not persecute them. Don't you run your big mouth. And it's very easy to do, especially when you kind of have a personal issue there but it's very far much better to keep your mouth shut and certainly don't raise up your hand against them. Just continue as you are. And, and so we find a number of things just in these first two verses that follow the life of the redeemed, that follow the crazy person, that follows the individuals that has dedicated their very lives to the cause of Christ, and they will say you're crazy for doing so. Notice the command in verse 16. But rise 
and stand upon thy feet. Uh, unless it's your quitting time, there's no time to stop. There's no time to set. Now, he'd been literally knocked down by this vision, and his first command was to get back up. You know what? Uh, if you've not been in this very long, you're going to fall flat on your face. And we immediately think about uh, getting messed up with a woman or getting on drinking or something like that. But you know what your biggest mess up is? When you ignore the things of Christ. When you ignore the Bible. When the only time you pick it up to read it is at the church building. That is when you've already messed up. He uses that against us. So the crazy individual tonight is the individual that lives in this book. Uh, that and, and, you know, it's a strange day in which we live. And believe it or not, I left my phone at home for once. I guess it's in the pickup. But uh, we, we stay in that a whole lot. But my, my phone has two Bible apps, and I don't know how I downloaded two. They're, they're different the way they're laid out. But you know what? Uh, you don't necessarily have to carry your Bible with you, and you can still be in the book. You can still, that's an amazing day to live in to me, that we can read it literally any time that we want to, and, and still we don't get involved in it. So people who do that, that literally immerse themselves in the person of Christ and in his book, they're called crazy. Amen. They're called stupid. They, they are people, you know, uh, here a few uh, years ago, back probably uh, the late 90s, early 2000s, there was a whole group that began to call, be called Jesus Freaks. And the reason they were called Jesus Freaks is the cause of Christ took up the majority of their time. Uh, that'd be a good thing to be called, would it not? That, that would be a good thing to be identified with because the majority of our time of these crazy individuals like we are, the crazy, uh, the madness that, that uh, Agrippa threw on Paul is the same thing we should experience today. We should be the one identified as crazy for this individual. Second part of verse 16, he says, to make thee a minister. Now, if you underline in your Bible, I want you to just put, to make thee a minister. Now, who was doing the making? The person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was making Paul a minister. Now, everybody in sovereign grace circles want to do cartwheels about uh, the divinity of Christ and him choosing a people before the world began. But let me say this. Paul didn't make himself a minister. Christ did. I, I, I've literally heard people say, well, you know, I'll try it a little while and see if I like it. No, no, no. If you are a called man of God, it's a lifetime commitment. It doesn't matter whether you like it or not. You're in for the long haul. And, and listen, it is no more a choice than a choice to choose Christ instead of the world. It is a divine calling. And, and he places you in that ministry. So people who spend the entirety of their life preaching from this book they're called crazy. They're, they're called, uh, uh, they're looked at as though uh, they don't have their focus in the right direction. Not crazy, but just dedicated. Then in verse 17, he says this, uh, he's going to make him a minister. And then he says, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles whom now I send thee. So he says, I'm delivering you from the Jews, and I'm sending you to the Gentiles. I want you to go to the Gentiles and speak the name of Christ. I want you to go to the Gentiles and show them who I am. Your ministry is now for the Gentiles. Now, it doesn't seem crazy or madness to us because we are Gentiles. We're a Gentile people. But that would be no more crazy or 
are foolish to us if they said, if the Lord said to me, Larry, I want you to go to Israel and preach the gospel. Now, my number one thing is I can't speak Jewish. I, I don't know that language. I can't speak Hebrew. But I want you to see if God was in it, I was to go. That would seem stupid. 53-year-old man headed out for literally the other side of the world to preach the gospel. No, not, not crazy. Dedicated. Dedicated. Remember when Brother Downs at 65 took off for the Middle East or the Far East? You know what most people said it was? I literally heard his sister say it to me on the phone. He's crazy. No, Brother Downs wasn't crazy. He was just dedicated to Christ. And there is a huge difference. And, and many times today, everything gets molded up and, and moved about and we don't see what... <laughs> what we are supposed to be and what is the difference between crazy and simply committed unto Christ. Verse 18, to open their eyes, and remember he was still giving this responsibility to Paul, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith, this is in me. So he, uh, he commanded Paul to go, and he uh, gave him the equipment to do it. Now, what people would think we're crazy for today is when we don't have every dollar and dime accounted for. You know, I really don't have any idea a little bit about Mexico, and that's changed some now, how much money it takes to supply for a family my size in a foreign country. Uh, do, you add, do you tally it all, all up first, or do you trust God? You know, Paul, Paul never said one thing about finances, did he? In fact, he made tents when he lived in Corinth to keep from being a burden on the church. He did not want them to think that he was doing it for the money. He did not want them to think that because they paid him, he stuck around. You know why he stuck around? It was because of his commitment to Christ. It was because his foolhardy love for the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and for what he, Christ, had given him to do. So he receives his commission, verse 19, Whereupon, o, o King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Now, uh, in verse 19, we want into a problem for people who want to be mad or crazy or in love with Christ, and that's obedience. You will never be crazy to the things of Christ You'll never be foolishly obedient to the things of Christ <laughs> until you're committed to it. That is, <laughs> that is a, an element of the redeemed. It's not an element of lost people. He says, <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was not disobedient. I, I listened to the heavenly vision. I followed the heavenly vision. So one measure of this evening that you can think about yourself, how obedient are you to Christ when even it seems crazy? Uh, that uh, I remember when I, this is uh, six years ago, seven years ago now, when I couldn't get off to preach that meeting in Missouri and I quit on the spot. I said, here's my notice. And I came home, and I said, Donna, I quit my job today. And she gave me the look. Well, the Lord will provide something for us. I worked, within a week, I was working over here. And then later, he gave me a double blessing and gave me a job with the same benefits and twice the money. See, that doesn't come uh, just by throwing, uh, throwing the jacks out there and see where they lay. You have to be obedient. 
If you're going to serve Christ and you're going to be crazy about Christ, you're going to be mad about the stuff he does, then you have to trust him fully. And listen, that comes with age, but it don't start until you begin to trust him and, uh, and follow him in what he's given you to do. Verse 20, but shewed first unto me of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet or minimal or required of repentance. Now, I want you to see the first message of Jesus or John, excuse me, the first message of John was repentance. The first message of Jesus was repentance and the first message of Paul was repentance itself. But now, repentance is simply this, being genuinely sorry and uh, convicted and troubled about sin. Now, a personally, a person that's dead cannot have that ability. And so until he brings life into your spiritual nostrils, you can never be repentant. But immediately when he does, you are. You, you realize and see and understand how against God you really are. Immediate is repentance. And so I want you to see initially that message wasn't received any better than it was John the Baptist. It wasn't received any better of the lips of the Lord Jesus Christ. It wasn't received well from the person of Paul. But the message hasn't changed. Uh, it amazes me, you know, Nine times out of ten, when you're speaking of uh, evangel evangelism, street corner stuff, going from church to church, whatever portion of evangelism is there, that they always speak on redemption. Not a bad subject, but how could a person possibly be redeemed until they know what their situation is? You know what? We can't be sorry for something until we know what it is. You can't repent of something you know you didn't do wrong. You, you come in, your wife's upset, and you know, got your cold potatoes sitting there on the table, and immediately you know something's wrong. But you don't know what. Uh, repentance is essential in this last day. We, need to, we don't need to change the agenda. We don't need to simply preach on the glories of heaven, but our message and his message and Jesus' message and, and John's message always began with repentance. Verse 21, For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Now I want you to see they weren't glad about the message that Paul was receiving. And if you're, if you're crazy about Jesus, if you're mad about the things of God, if you're totally connected to the Lord Jesus Christ, people are not going to like it, and particularly religious people are not going to like it. Uh, and, and they're not going to be, uh, they're not going to be rejoicing with you, and they're not going to be glad about it. Listen, we live in a very, um, you know, in some sense, right now, it is popular to be a Christian. But it's not true belief. Think about the churches, so-called, that are mushrooming today. Do they have a share of the truth about them? Do they, do they know what that book teaches concerning redemption? And if you came up to the average person there and said, grace, 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 it's all the unmerited favor of God, if you said that to them, you know what? They'd get mad at you. Yeah. If you told them, uh, dear friend, there's nothing good you can do, they'd get mad at you. And if you told them, I don't care how many times you've been dumped, I don't care how many times uh, you've run the altar, if Christ is not in you, you will die and go to a devil's hell, I'll guarantee you you're going to tick them off. And that, that is the day which we live. And that was the Jewish day too. They were fine, they were fine with Paul 
as long as he was talking to them about Judaism. And the minute, the minute he was saved and began to purport that Christ was the very living Son of God, they began to hate him, and they'll hate you too. Listen, when you're crazy about Jesus, they're not going to like you. Yeah, it's not going to be a pleasant trip. Verse 22. Having therefore obtained help of God, so he didn't stay in there. He wasn't arrested. They hadn't killed him. Having therefore obtained the help of God, I continue unto this day. So considering what he went through and considering what the Jews had the Romans to do against Paul, how did he continue? Because he loved Christ. He was in love with Christ. He was mad about him. He was crazy about the person that Jesus was, and it gave him a continuance. You ever wonder why some people just don't last as long as the June Frost? They're just not in love with Christ. Uh, you know why Don and I have been together 33 plus years in, a, in an age where, I, I read this other day, People, me and Donna's age, the average marriage lasts eight years. And, but it isn't because she's so great or I'm so great. I really believe this, marriages last because they're crazy about Jesus. Do I love Donna? Absolutely, she loves me. But if your focus is on each other, it won't last long. Crazy about the Lord Jesus, mad about him. Uh, totally consumed by the person of Christ. That's the only thing that will last in the day in which we live. And we see more and more fading away from that. Then, uh, and uh, the rest of verse 22, having therefore obtained help of God, I continue into this wet day, Witnessing both to the small and great, saying none other than none other things than which the prophets and Moses did say should come. Now I want you to see, he said he would talk to anybody, to the small and the great. Now you think about our current president, President Biden, our former president, President Trump. The one before him, Barack Obama. What would you say if you met him? Now, I have to be very honest. Obama and Biden, I don't have much use for. And it would be the temptation of this flesh to tell them everything I ever thought about them. But what good would that do them? And what good would that do me? Yeah, right. The only thing that I would know to do if I could, if I could uh, harness this flesh well enough is tell him the goodness of Christ and, and just leave it there. And that's what Paul said he was doing. Why did he do that? Why was he upset? Man, he was, out, he was in the hands of the man that could say, go free. And all he did was the only thing he could do. And that was to speak of him concerning Christ. He never once asked to be excused for a crime he did not commit anyway. He wanted to spend the time telling Agrippa and anybody else that would listen of how crazy he was about the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how he wanted to spend his time. And, and I ask you, the, is the person of Christ that all-consuming to you as he was to Paul? What, 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 it, does he take up that much of your time? Is he the person that he should be? Verse 23, this is what he taught them, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and that he should shew light unto the, unto the people, meaning the Jews, and to the Gentiles. And as he th thus spake for himself, again, remember, he was, he was setting his own defense, and instead of saying, I didn't do it, the Jews hooked me up, they, they rooked me around, all he did was speak of Christ. You know, you know, it takes a crazy man to do that, does it not? 
A man that is totally committed unto Christ, his one opportunity to get away, and instead of making a defense for himself, he spoke the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a man that the world would say is crazy. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. Now, I want you to say he's beside himself, or he's outside his normal way of thinking from much learning. Now, when I say that, you think of a couple of personal things about Paul's life. Number one, that book was not yet written yet. The New Testament, the, two, the New Testament's chronicles, the gospel of the Lord's ministry did not exist. The, all the letters to the churches did not exist because Paul wrote them. And so this learning he did came from two ways. Number one, it's the careful study of the Old Testament. And the other thing was spending time alone with Christ. You ever took that book and said, I just don't understand this, and went before the Lord with a desire to understand it? But whatever learning you received, it came from Christ, not from you. And those are the best lessons you get. Now, I'm fully convinced how he got those letters, how he spent that time with the Lord was in effective prayer. Spending time just with the person of Christ and not for a list of things you want, but just to stand in the presence of the Almighty. Just to be close to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. That was sufficient for Paul. And in that spot, he learned a great deal. That made him crazy. That, that made him off the chain. That, that made him beside himself with much learning. So we find, first of all, Agrippa says, you're, you're outside yourself. You're not thinking right, Paul. And then he says this, much learning doeth make thee mad yeah. or crazy. Not mad about to get angry at somebody. But, uh, but crazy, out of your head, not thinking straight. You're crazy. You know what people say about you giving at least a tenth of your money down here? They say you're crazy. They say you don't even know what you're doing. They say it's a waste of time and a waste of money. No, you're crazy. <laughs> You're crazy about the person of Christ. He, he, he knocked you flat on your face like he did Paul on the road to Damascus, and you never quite got over it. That's a person that's mad. That's a person that's crazy. That's a person that desires eternal things more than the temporal things that are present, and only you can answer yourself for that <coughs> if you're really in that condition. Verse 25, but he said, I'm not mad or crazy, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. So he said, I'm not crazy, Festus. I'm telling the truth. Do we not live in a day to day that what is the truth is deemed crazy? Can you imagine the day, and, and this is a reality. Going into a public school and being asked by the class, Are you, do you identify as a girl or boy or neither? God help us. And we're the ones crazy. <laughs> but you know, they would say that about us, would they not? They'd say we're crazy. And they do every day. And, and, and so he says, <laughs> I'm not crazy, Festus. I'm speaking the things of Christ. I, I'm in the middle of his will. And, and notice what he says. For the king knoweth of these things, but for whom also I speak freely. Now, I've learned this from 27 years of ministry. 
You can read people. You certainly can. And he was reading he was reading Agrippa like an open book. Mm-hmm. He knew exactly that Agrippa was not only listening, but he was plugged in. He was getting it. He had a level of understanding. He says, For the for the king knows of the things <laughs> of these things, before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hid from him. For this thing was done, was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know thou believest. Then Agrippa said, Paul, almost thou hast persuaded, persuaded me to be a Christian. Mm-hmm. And you know the rest of the uh, of the recording. He never makes one plea for himself. He never says, Agrippa, let me go. I won't do it no more. He says, Agrippa, I I know you can get this. I know it's clicking with you. And all Agrippa would do was move him up the court line, take him to the next level. Mm -hmm. And you know what? When he got bumped up again, what he did again? Paul did the very same thing again. And that, that's what a crazy person does. Tells of the story of Christ to the day they can't tell it no more. Till all their energy is gone, till all their, their carnal mind is expended, and they're still telling people of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you crazy about the Lord Jesus Christ? Has much learning made you mad? As it as. <laughs> That's just thought about Paul. That's a very good question for each and every one of us. Yeah.